Good afternoon. The temptation is to say good evening, but good afternoon. Welcome to this Dadraff stream, taking a 170-171 for a ride on the East Coastway route. We are going to be kicking off in around about three minutes, so please have your drinks and light refreshments ready. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to a very rare daytime stream with me, Richard, aka Debrow. If this happens to be the first video I'll stream you see by me, then my name is Richard. I'm a mainline freight train driver and a former passenger train driver based in the southeast of England. So, Fife Circle Line for Train City World 4 officially releases tomorrow on the 26th of March. Uh, part of the Five Circle DLC is the Class 170. Now I have done a preview video already on the um, Five Circle, that went out earlier on today and there will be another one going out in a couple of hours time. And there will be a 2030 stream tonight on the Five Circle, so if you do want to see the Five Circle, um, do pop along and um, check that out, it would be really good to see you there. Anyway, in the lead up to the Five Circle with the 170 coming out, I kept saying someone is going to reskin this on day one into Southern Livery, we can get this on the East Coastway, because um, it's quite a local route to me. Rather than waiting for someone to do it, I spent all day yesterday having a go in Livery Editor myself and getting the um, the 170 reskinned into a Southern 171 Livery. So yeah, it is, it is a 170, it does say 171 on the thumbnail, um, but it obviously is a reskinned 170. Before we jump in, I have got to tell you that all the views and opinions expressed within this stream are solely my own, may not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. Furthermore, Rivet Games have given me the key for the route slash train completely free of charge, um, but all opinions are my own. So, without further ado, let's press the button and jump into Train Sim World number four. To the trains! Um, Choose a route. So there we go. Five Circle Line, Edinburgh, Kilcaldy, Dunfermline. We are going to be streaming that at 2030 tonight, but I have already got a review video on the channel. A little bit of fun this afternoon. We're going to jump into East Coastway because I've, I've been waiting for a 170 for the longest time to do this. Um, 
Timetable mode, East Coastway 313 on foot. Now, I did want to create a custom scenario and get the 170 in game using a custom scenario, but it doesn't seem like it works in the scenario editor just yet, or my custom livery wouldn't work in the scenario editor, um, which is a little bit frustrating. So, we're going to start at. Uh, come on. Brighton. We're going to start at Brighton at 10 o'clock. Dynamic weather turned on, all of that good stuff. Um, and we're going to do a run down to Eastbourne. So it's not going to be a particularly run, uh, long stream, just going to sort of be a little preview stream. Just because I've been waiting for the longest time to get this train on this route. So, <laughs> um, who have we got in? Lady Sophia, Onaga Manor. Hello, Artie moderating. Hello, Rick Astro, Pig and Bob, Astro Penguin. Daniel DeBlox Gamer, Anthony uh, McGort Grotti. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong there. Taylor Simulator Rouse. Great to have so many of you in on a daytime stream, which is always nice. Okay, so we're going to have to spawn the train in, in free roam mode. Let me know... <coughs> excuse me. Let me know if you need the game audio up or down, guys. We can absolutely tweak that as we go along. Not a problem at all. So, spawn train. 170. Southern. And there she is. Of course, it does say 170 on the front and not 171. We've got no way of changing that. Uh, the main difference between the 170 and the 171 is the 170 has got this type of coupler. I'm not sure what they're called. And the 171 have got the, the Delna style um, coupler. So that is the main difference. But yes, my first time using livery editor. So please do go easy on me in the feedback. Obviously, we've still got the Scott Rail interior, which is a little bit irritating. And these are free car sets. When they used to run on this service, they were two car sets. But there we go. We'll have a little bit, little more of a look at the livery as we go along. But I think, I think it's pretty good. I think we've done a half decent job. We're gonna have to follow that all service now, which is uh, not the end of the world. Although that is a stopper, and we're not, so it's a little bit annoying. But it'll make it slightly more interesting. So, first thing we're going to do is get our safety systems turned on. If you want the full review on the train as well, do head over to um, the video I put out earlier. So I do sort of talk about the train in a bit more detail. But we will have a little look through it on here as well. Key in. Into neutral. Uh, there we go. We're going to set our DRA because we are waiting at a red signal. We know that because we've got the banner repeater there. And day running on. <coughs> the headlights do seem pretty bright. I never noticed that before. Could be a lighting issue on this route though. And doors open on the right hand side. Uh, door release button. Someone's playing funny games and they've twiddled it around. Yeah, full Scott Rail livery inside. Um, so full disclosure, Southern did have some Scott Rail 170s um, running on the network. So this is not entirely unstereotypical because we did have Scott Rail 170s running on the network for a little while. So uh, it's plausible. We like plausible. So the 170s, or should I say 171s, are primarily used on the uh, London Bridge to Uckfield services and the Marshlink services Eastbourne to Ashford. However, the 171s used to run a full service from Brighton to Ashford. Um, so that's the service we're simulating today. I can't remember when it stopped running, but it was a really good service, really um, a really fast, beneficial service. So right, let's go into our free roam mode. We are this nice little free car here, and we're going to set our destination as Eastbourne. So this being a fast service, this will be calling out Lewis, Polgate and Eastbourne only, as it did back in the day. Um, it would then reverse at Eastbourne, call it Bexhill, St Leonard's Warrior Square, Hastings, Rye, Appledore, Ham Street and Ashford International. Destination is set as platform number three Eastbourne. Banner repeater has come off. Let's get going. Uh, we should put something on the destination screen. Haymarket. That's. We'll put special up. I think that works. Special. Yes. Let's go for it. Okay. We are off to Eastbourne. Let's get going. So I do mention this in the um, 
the other video, the 171s are very, very quiet. The 170s, 171s are very, very quiet in the cab. I spent quite a bit of time route learning on them in the past. No game audio or very quiet. Game audio seems a little bit low. Let me see what I can do with that, guys, before we get going. Um, the cab audio is very quiet on these in real life. So is it an inside issue or an outside issue? No game audio. Um... We're going in, we're, twe we're tweaking this, we're tweaking this. Game audio. You are correct, there is no game audio. That is really, really bad of me, how terrible. Hopefully you have got game audio now. We should have game audio now anyway. Let me know, have you got that coming through? I'm not hearing anything, even the tones. Hopefully you have got that coming through now. Let me know in the chat. Yep, we're, we are there. ZGOVs, thank you very much. Can hear things now, RT. Pick and pop, we have audio. That is my bad. I still have the computer set up for, for recording and not streaming. So yeah, these are very, very quiet in the cab. So the fact you can't hear much in the cab is prototypical. I've spent a lot of time commuting on these units. Um, in actual fact, my drive, my initial driver training was in Ashford and I live in Hastings, or lived in Hastings I should say. Um, so when I was doing my initial train driver training I was commuting on these every day. And I spent a considerable amount of time in the cab of these doing uh, route learning on the Hastings to Ashford section. So I'm, I'm reasonably familiar with them. And they are extremely quiet in the cab, so you know, you can't hear very much in the cab but that is very, very prototypical. Uh, Tom Abbott, hello! Uh, someone was saying, am I going to do an EMR livery? I, livery editor is definitely not my strong point. This is the first time I've used livery editor. Um, I will upload this to Creators Club though, so you can download it. But I'm sure someone will jump in and make a, uh, a better livery. Some of my colours are a little bit off in places. Lawrence Adams, hello, how are we doing? Um, someone was asking, does door select, deselect work? I'm not entirely sure. If you remind me on the approach to Lewis, I will press the buttons and see what happens. Uh, train boys, there will be no locomotive delivery location or Discord on this stream today. This is just a, a, a short little casual afternoon stream. However, 2030 tonight we are going to be doing the five circle. Um, and that will have all the usual features on it. So we're heading uphill towards Morsecombe at the moment. Astro Pengu, going between Eastbourne and Bexhill on these is just something else, especially on a bright summer day. It used to be living in um, living in Hastings. This used to be a fantastic service. They only run as far as Eastport now, which is unfortunate. But when they did go through to Brighton, um, it was fantastic because it was a it was a fast service. Definitely, definitely would like to see the extension of this route in game from Hastings along to from Eastbourne, sorry, along to Hastings and on to Ashford, linking up with the South Eastern High Speed. You'd link London Commuter and the South Eastern High Speed routes together then, um, which I think would be really, really nice. Let's get a flyby shot. Small scream heading down towards Farmer. Lady Sophia, does Fife have level crossings, Richard? Do you know what? I can't remember. Hey, Benjamin Bachelor, thank you very much. It's my first time using Livery Editor, um, so hopefully it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. Right, 
uh, we have caught the train up in front. We did think that was going to happen. So, one yellow. David Connor, the 170, I, I think... For me, I think the sounds are slightly off. So, I think the sounds are a little bit more droney. I think they're a little bit too high-pitched. They're not terrible by any... any um, you know, any stretch of the imagination. They're not terrible, but I think, in reality, I think the 170 is a little bit more dronier. Um, the cab's got some pretty basic functionality into it. I would like to have seen, like, the way the GSMR has been implemented is not particularly good. You can't register and deregister. Um, you know, there's no functionality on the TMS screen. So I, I think they could have done a little bit more with the cab, but overall, it's a welcome addition to the game. It's nice to have a, um, a sort of modern DMU. Obviously, we've had the 166 and the 150, but. Um, they're not what I, under 158, but they're not what I would call modern DMUs. The 170s probably a, I suppose 170 is not even that modern these days, but it's definitely a welcome addition to the game, and we're going to be able to use it on quite a few different routes, which is nice. Uh, alcoholic, hello, Stu, hello, how are we doing? John Moore, different liveries on two different sides. That's original. Uh, no, it's the same livery on both sides. Yeah, the, the green colour texture looks very different on that side, like on the, um, on the doors, the dark green looks different. Now, like I said, it's my first time using livery editor, so I'm not sure why that is, because it is the same decal and the same colour. <coughs> uh, Astro Pengu, hi, uh, um, I think these are really quite quite comfortable to ride on, also got smooth acceleration. They are very comfortable to ride on, they are nice units. David Connor, I can't wait to drive the new five route tomorrow. Thanks for your trusted opinion. Thank you very much, David. Um, Mike Allen, I'm not an expert with the livery designer, but I believe, if, regardless of what platform it's created on, it will work on the other platforms. Um, somebody who plays Train City World on uh, Xbox or PlayStation might be able to confirm that, but I'm pretty sure it will port over. So before we start descending the bank down to Lewis, there is a local instruction. This is a long, steep downhill gradient. Uh, there is a local instruction which requires us to perform a running brake test. So we just pop the brakes on, make sure that they are working, which we can see they absolutely are. And then back up to 70, got a 55 coming up in a minute. Uh, BDL, first thing I'm doing is giving it a National Express Scott Rail livery and making an early 2000s scenario on Edinburgh Glasgow. I think having the livery editor and the scenario plan and formation design and, and, and free roam mode, it sort of really does open up what you can do with the game. So anything that makes it more playable, I, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely up for that. Uh, Lady Sophia, Richard livery is awesome, thank you very much. There doesn't seem to be any, and again, this 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 could be as it is in real life, but there doesn't kind of seem to be any noise when you put the brakes on. There is from outside. There's quite a nice hissing noise of the brakes. The other thing they've done quite well on this is they've got WSP wheel slip protection modelled. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, wheel slip protection modelled really nicely. So if you are on a slippery rail, if it's wet or snowy or leafy, and you put the brakes on, um, the brake gauge will bounce up and down and if you go into the outside view you can hear it hissing away as it's releasing and applying the brakes so that they have done that they have done very nicely uh, Matthew no idea I'm afraid train boy yes I've heard that blue Peter is back in steam never been to the seven valley but again it's definitely on my list of to do my to-do list is quite large, unfortunately. Just finding the time to do everything. Okay, one yellow on the distant signal. We know that's a distant signal because it's got an R on the signal plate. And we're coming down towards Kingston Tunnel. Warning for the 10 miles an hour coming into Lewis. 
Um, BDL, I, I don't think it does feel a lot like the 166. It does feel like its own train. And we are one yellow red ahead. 313 coming the other way. If you like your 313s and you like this route, there is a Seaford to Brighton um, driver's eye view cab ride with commentary on my channel somewhere. Do go and check that one out. And we are obviously we're following that ore service. This is one thing I do like about free rain mode is that you can tuck yourself in behind another train. And then effectively you, you then end up running on cautionary signals, which is how it is in real life. You very, very rarely run on greens all day. So it's quite nice in free roam mode to be able to do that. Don't forget to test the doors at Lewis, Lady Sophia. Thank you very much. We'll have a little play with them. And there is our AWS magnet, so the red is close. He's in full service braking. No more than 20 over the AWS magnet. That is one yellow red at the end of the platform at Lewis, where we will test the doors. So we got 76 of you lovely people watching, which is fantastic for a daytime stream. So if you haven't already, please do hit that like button, consider subscribing, that would be awesome. Uh, and if you have just joined us, we are going to be streaming on the Five Circle tonight at 20.30, so hopefully you can join me for that. Um, the theme on the Five Circle tonight is going to be um, weather and lighting. So we're going to have some snowy, have a bit of snow on there. We're going to have some wet runs and some dark runs, um, just to kind of see how well that's all been implemented. And considering I signed this route in real life, I'm doing pretty terrible, because I should know there's a 10 there. I believe the 10 is here for SPAD mitigation um, because the signal at the end of the platform is extremely close to the junction and you're on a steep downhill gradient. If you were to SPAD that one at the end of the, the platform, um, you'd definitely be fouling the junction of the London lines. Yeah, the lady, the Sophia, the, the wheel slip will definitely be tested. Uh, Artie, lunchtime, he thinks. Nice ham and cheese sandwich. I had um, my lovely wife made me some chicken soup before we started. I know, it's, it's a little bit healthier than what I normally would have gone for, admitted, admittedly. But uh, Right, 5 to 12. We're only free. We are stopped slightly short, but never mind. And door. Okay, what we're going to do, sorry. We'll press the door deselect button pressed and then door release so let's check what that's released if, it's that, if that's released or anything and in answer to your question the door deselect button does only release the first carriage so yet the back carriages have not been released so that is working there we go there's all of them that is working as it should do, which is good. So, sight I never thought we'd see in Train Sim World. We've got a 170 at Lewis. Fantastic. Right, we've got a green. Let's position ourselves for a nice flyby shot. We can listen to the audio as well then. If we can hear it over top of the Ying box, that is. Screenshots at the ready. He's got his hazard lights on. Yeah, again, I'm not sure what's going on with the livery design because one side of the train, the green looks really, really sort of slimer type green, and the other side it looks absolutely fine. So if we jump around to the other side of the train, the green looks okay. This side, 
some sort of lighting issue or, or something going on. Right, we'll pull ourselves down here and then we'll give it some uh, give it some revs as we pull around the corner. Stu, thank you very much, my friend. That's extremely generous. Hey, Richard, I've been on the Seven Valley Railway. Um, when West Midlands Railway won the franchise and took over, they took all station adopters for free, paid for food and return run to Budley. Great day. Nice one. That's very good of them. Right, let's give it some revs. Right, we are off to Polgate. Um, why is it Dovetail Games don't do things like this? Well, Dovetail Games give us the routes, give us the trains, and they give us the tools, don't they? They give us the, the free roam mode, delivery editor, the formation editor, um, scenario editor. They give us the tools, and then we sort of play the game how we want to play it. And it's really nice it's kind of taken that direction. I think free roam has, has opened up the game a lot, in my opinion. It's really nice that we're able to sort of take the, the, the game in the direction we want to take it and play it in the way we want to play it rather than being stuck in just the basic timetable mode. Uh, Joshua, really, really pleased to see the 170s in game. Really pleased to see them in game, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we'll get them in cross country livery, we'll get them in East Midlands trains livery as well, so I, I think we are going to see them across a variety of routes. Obviously, I kept banging on about putting it in southern livery, so that's why I've uh, I've jumped the gun a bit with this one. Someone was asking if the engine start and the engine stop buttons work. Remind me when we get to Polgate, and we will test it. Yeah, Eliza, this is a um, it's a train sim world two route, I believe, the East Coastway. Uh, so yeah, quite possibly is going to be lighting issues. Just heard the changeover as well as we approach 70 miles an hour. As we approach under the Lewis Bypass, or Beddingham Bypass, I think it's called. Tom Abbott, what are you thinking of the new five circle route? Uh, so I'm not going to talk too much about the five circle route here, but as kind of a, I mean, it's sort of release day stream for ambassadors for five circle releases obviously tomorrow um, I think it's a good route I think it's been quite well done I think the biggest problem with it is it's not up to current standards so it's definitely a welcome addition to the game I, I do I will speak more about it in the stream tonight um, but when we look at recent releases such as the suffragette line which obviously come out um, last week we look at the Goblin line, we look at Blackpool branches, we look at even the Benino line by Rivet Games themselves. Those routes are fantastic. I mean, Suffragette line is, is just brilliant. It's extremely well done. And the Five Circle almost feels like... I mean, this is a Train Sea World 2 route that we're playing now here on the East Coastway. Five Circle almost feels like it's this sort of standard. It's this kind of Train Sea World 2 standard. It doesn't feel like it's up to the same standards as Train Sea World 4. Um... But it, I'm not saying it's a bad route by any stretch of the imagination. It just seems to lack that final coat of polish. But yeah, 2030 tonight, we'll be on that route and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Right, we are good for 80, then 90, so we can get a little bit of speed out of our uh, 170 slash 171. And we do have a hundred of you lovely people watching this daytime stream. If you haven't already, please do hit the like button. Consider subscribing. If you're wondering what's going on, we are a southern... Oh, we're using the 17 Scott Rail 171 from the Five Circle. Um, we have reskinned. We've got a dodgy reskin into Southern Livery, and we're taking it for a spin on the East Coast Way line. You'd also be able to create a scenario with this um, going up to Selhurst, because these do run up to Selhurst for fuel. And obviously, you've got the um, the Arkfield 171s as well. So potentially, we could see a timetable mod for the Brighton Main Line. Which put the, puts these on the Brighton Main Line. That, that would be pretty cool. Right, 
Right, we're up to 80. We'll take it to 90. So I was having conversations earlier on about this little screen here. Now, Jasper said on the Rivet Game Stream that this is a CCTV screen. I doubted that at the time, and my doubts have been confirmed. This is... Oh, we're not going to get to 90. This screen here is actually something known as the DAS, the DAS, the Driver Advisory System. And what this does is it, it kind of... I, I, I've not been on, not driven a train that's got one on it, so I'm not overly familiar with it. But it basically advises you as the driver when you can coast. Um, and kind of advises you how you're running in, in relative, relative to the timetable. So if you're running early, it might come up on here telling you to coast or telling you to slow down. So it just, just gives you advice on how to drive the train in the most economical uh, and passenger friendly way. Uh, James Edward Coulter says, only program to work on ScotRail services. The Freightliner 66s were fitted with them. I've driven a few of those, but it's never been operational. And I think I should get some brakes in, otherwise we're going to have a spad. Unfortunately, that has just stepped up. I think the 387s on the um, Great Western also have the system fitted. Uh, but I believe it's actually built into the dashboard on those. One yellow, our red signal is at Berwick. James Richard, I'm doing training on one with it. They don't work on non Scott Rail units as they're specifically programmed for Scott Rail. Uh, Matthew Maserati is the 171 new. So, this is a fake 171. It is the. It is the we look at the front of it. You see the dodgy livery editor with the, the colour of the front is there as well. Um, so, the 170 is included as part of the five circle route, which releases tomorrow. Uh, and I've reskinned it into southern livery to create the 171. The main difference between the 170 and the 171 being the 171 has got a Delna style coupler uh, on the front of it, so it's able to couple up to Electra styles for rescue purposes. And we are crawling down towards Berwick, where we've got one yellow again. Again, I know I said it earlier, but the, the joys of free roam is that you can do stuff like this. You can tuck yourself in behind a stopping train and actually run on cautionary signals, uh, which gives you a much more realistic driving experience. I uh, stepped up to a green. Next station stop on this service will be Polgate. Yeah, Eliza, I, I'm aware the thumbnail does say 171, but I did make it quite clear within the first a little bit clickbaity, maybe, possibly, hopefully not. Um, I did say within the, like the first five or ten seconds of the the stream that it was a 170 reskinned. Mike Allen, I've never done a video on the Scenario Planner because, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I don't really touch it, um, and I'm not particularly sort of familiar with it. It's something I can look into. It's something that I do want to have a, a little bit more of a play with. After playing with the livery editor um, with this trainer, I've really enjoyed doing it, so it's something I can definitely look into. Uh, Lady Sophia, we will not forget the engine stop when we get to Polgate. Uh, Dougie 2023, is this timetable mode? Yes, yeah, so we're in timetable mode. Um, however, we've spawned the 170, the Southern Liveried, um, reskinned 170 in in free in um, free roam. So we're in we're in timetable mode, but we are spawned as a free roam train. Uh, 
and we'll do an outside pull away from Polegate because we should get a little bit more um, a little bit more engine noise Astro Pango, interesting how the southern version has a coupler for rescue purposes but if it breaks down on the non-electrified part going to have to get another 171 to help it we do have adapter couplings for locomotives as well, so we, we could potentially, with an adapter coupling, you could use a locomotive to haul these away. One yellow. Red's protecting pole gate. Hopefully by the time we get there, the train in front would have disappeared. We'll get a little bit more break in. The signals, you can tell this is a train sim world 2 route. The signals just don't pop particularly well. If this has been a train sim world 4 route with a new lighting effect, we'd be able to see that signal from here. Which kind of does affect the way we're driving the train as well, because if we could see that signal was still red, we'd be slowing down a lot more. Warning for the 35. I can see the signal, but I can't see what the aspect is. I think it's still red. Uh, Man City fan, how do you, you free roam in timetable mode? Um, so if you go into timetable mode, but instead of joining timetable mode on a train, if you spawn on foot in timetable mode, um, you can then spawn your own trains in. Red ahead. yellow. Uh, cross train spotting, that is something that I was disappointed to see. The horn only has the high and low, you can't move the horn to left and right. So what you have what you should have on here is your high and low tone, tones, but you should be able to move it left and right for soft high and soft low as it says there, but yeah, unfortunately that's not implemented. We'll see if we can do um, an outside stoppy shot here as well. <laughs> Busy platform. Okay, we are required to set our DRA here because the previous signal was one yellow. Doors on the left. Right, we are going to check the engine start-stop feature now. So... Let's open the window so we can hear it. Uh, it does have soft if you click control and space it does um. okay perfect so you can't click it in cab but it is there okay someone was asking about engine stop confirmed and no one's getting on because obviously we're in free roam mode and we're not supposed to be stopped here Yep, so that does work. Okay, let's try the engine start. So engine start stop is a thing. <coughs> I like the way that when we move the reverser between neutral and forward, uh, we're getting the fault lights coming on. 
other than that there's no other interaction with the TMS screen here at all which is a, is a little bit of a shame if I'm being completely honest uh, we'll do the pull away from the outside say that we need to take our DRL off. We are expecting a red signal so and once you get above 16 miles an hour you'll get a the engine noise will change just like that. There's a sweet spot there where the window has to be open so far to get the noises. Uh, we were expecting red ahead, so we'll just about see that we got a green. We are good for 35 around the corner. As we head down towards Eastbourne. The other thing that I haven't showed you yet is the hill start button. You will need to use this on Edinburgh on, on the five circle. Annoyingly, the hill start button is that silver thing on the end of the throttle controller. You can't click it. Uh, same with the low tones on the horn. But it is operational by using the um, asterisk key. I think it's called the asterisk key. The same one you would to apply the brakes if you were on a locomotive hall train. You will need to use that on the five circle because otherwise you will end up rolling back because there's quite severe gradients on that route. We are heading down to Eastbourne where this train and this stream will terminate. Random user 2004, thank you very much. Uh, Eliza, I, yeah, I, I, I'm probably the same if I'm being honest. I don't think it was great, the engine start noise. Um, it's just saying I randomly get overspeed happening in the class 801 when I'm braking into a station randomly even though I was way below the limit. Any reason why that may have been? If you're heading towards a reduction in speed limits, so say you're in 100 and you're heading towards a 60, you might have overspeed sensors on approach to the 60. So although you might only be doing like, you know, you might only be doing 70 or 80 at that point, if you're outside of the braking curve, when you go over the sensors, it'll take you out all the same. So it, it could possibly be that, um, but without looking, I'm not entirely sure. Willingdon <coughs> Excuse me, Willingdon Junction. Uh, the line to our left joins us from Hastings and Ashford International. That's what we want to see added in game. That that's definitely got to be the next thing we have. So you reverse at Eastbourne, come back out, and then you turn um, off at the junction there, head towards Hastings and Ashford. As we pass through Hampden Park, which is my childhood station. James, it's not fully accurate. I usually have to start the engine 10 minutes before I depart Scarborough Station. When we terminate from the last service, we turn the engine off to save fuel, I'm pretty sure. Do you have to turn the engine on 10 minutes before because you're waiting for the air pressure to build up? Because if it's anything like our locomotives, once you shut down the engine, the compressor stops running, so it starts leaking air. So obviously once you restart it, you need to wait for the air pressure to build up again. Two yellows gives us the road all the way into Eastbourne. Astro Penguin at work tonight, Richard, so you won't be able to watch it tonight. Have a good day and see you later. No worries. Thank you very much, bud. I hope you have a good shift. 
cross train spotting, I would like to see the Chilterns in game, preferably of a 68 and a DBT. That that would be pretty cool. I would definitely be here for that. Twenty five coming up. This should be taking us into platform number three at Eastbourne because that's what we clicked. Yeah, so hopefully this little 171 on the East Coastway stream will inspire um, the folk at Dovetail Games to, to give us the Marshlink route through to Ashford. I think it would be a really interesting route because you get we've got obviously that this part of the East Coastway, so you'd have you'd have the changing ends move here at Eastbourne. Then the weather's now changed. You have the changing ends move here at Eastbourne. Um, then you go along the coast and along the, the, the Pevensey levels over towards Bexhill and Hastings. And when you get to Hastings, you come under the semaphore signals. The third rail runs out, and then your single line across the marshes to Rye, um, and then on into Ashford International. So I, I think it would be quite an interesting route to drive. I think it would be quite varied. So def definitely would be in favour of seeing that in game. Uh, James, I wonder if it depends on how cold it is as well, because, again, going back to our locos, when they shut down, you lose all your heating or your air conditioning in the cab. The hot plate stops working as well, which is really annoying if you're trying to heat your dinner up. Risky strategy. Approaching the buffer stops without being able to see where you're going. I wouldn't advise it. There we are, we have a 171 at Eastbourne for the first time in Train Sim World. I, I believe this is the very first time this has been done in Train Sim World. Um, certainly on stream anyway. Absolutely brilliant. I I am definitely here for that. Okay. Let's shut it down. And it is really a shame that we can't continue along to Ashford because that would be that would be pretty awesome. That definitely would be pretty awesome. So there we go, guys. Like I say, I'm not trying to fool anybody. That is the 170 from the um, the five circle route, the Scott Row 170, reliveried re liveried into Southern. Uh, I will upload it to Creators Club, so you will be able to download that livery. Although it's there are a few quirks on it. It's not the best livery in the world. So I suspect someone who's much better with livery designer. Um, will go in and probably make a better one but I will upload this anyway so there should be something there day one if you want to uh, put the 170 uh, the 171 southern skin onto the 170 it's a nice train it's a nice addition it's a nice addition to the game I'm really pleased that we have got it in game it, it is fantastic that we got it in game we are going to be 2030 tonight we are going to be on the five circle um, having a proper look at that we're going to be looking at the lighting and the weather effects in the 170 so hopefully you can join me for that if you want some five content if you want some five circle content already uh, i did put out a little review video of it earlier on uh, and i know the british ace mega sim um, and a few other of the the dovetail ambassadors have put content out today so do go and check those out hopefully you've enjoyed the stream guys i certainly have um, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely fantastic. You're also more than welcome to join our very friendly and inclusive Discord community. You will find a link to that in the description below. Let me know what you thought of the train. Let me know what you thought of the run and the stream in general. And hopefully, I will see you in another stream at 2030 or any other time. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.